I'm gonna give you a tour of the garden. This is how we end climate change. Grow your own food. Alfred, what do you do at the commune? I live, love, learn. Hello, this is the women's cabin. So we're back at the garden and there's like 15 new people from TikTok. Another TikToker has just arrived for a tour. And you are also welcome to come here. The address is in the description. Seriously, look how cool this place is. The garden, that intentional commune all over the For You page, is most likely a cult. They have an open door policy. It's really not safe. Please don't go there. Many people involved in this cult are f***ing QAnoners. This girl made the cat into a hat. Like People are spending countless hours of their day making like extensive YouTube videos about me. I think Rel actually got the first TikToker to come here, and that was the moment where the light bulbs flicked. So yeah, we all started making TikToks. This is probably going to be the last video I make for a while. I wanted to just show everybody what we're doing. And it blew up into like this crazy hate campaign. Update, I was just on the cult leader guys live and they admitted to um, killing and eating a cat. The garden is an off-grid, intentional community. It is one of the most truly egalitarian, intentional communities that I've ever found. Take me back to Tennessee, where the garden is sure to grow. Day to day in the garden is lots of gardening, lots of cooking, lots of experimenting with different building methods. So this is going to be a compost toilet, and we're building the foundational wall, which will also be the container for the, for the poop. The garden has been around for almost 13 years. Our guiding principles are equality and autonomy and our stewardship and uh, sustainability. The garden's overall mission is to show more people this lifestyle is possible. And so obviously you know I'm gonna ask, is this place a cult? Oh, no. I mean, of course, like that's what a cult would say. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Good, man. Welcome. Uh, do you want to talk? Oh, uh, yeah, man. Cool. Have you ever been to a community like this before? Oh, uh, no. I was just looking up all kinds of communities online, stumbled upon a YouTube video for this place. They said that they pretty much accept anybody. Also, people come here with a 10 day visitation period, and then they're consents to be part of the community or not. Most communities have a closed door, so you have to, you know, send them a message or make a request to stay. And that just holds like a different intention of the space. The very mission of this place is that it's free land for free people. When you have a closed door, everyone possesses the land far more. People start to feel like it's their land, you know what I mean? And it's not our land. That right over there is the dirt church. So what's the deal with the dirt church? Yeah, <laughs> so it was, it got called the dirt church because I think it used to be where people used to fuck or something like oh, this. Okay. But then at the same time, you know, like I guess what we're doing here is worshiping dirt, you know, like if we're all like farmers, you know, dirt is our, you know, right. best resource that we got. So we got to worship it. Later in my research on this place, saw some culty things. I was like, you know, I kind of want to just see what it's about, but I guess I'll figure that out. <laughs> so this is the hatchery office here at the garden. And where the magic happens, of course, the TikTok uploads, we have a signal booster in here. So if you're looking to get any Wi-Fi whatsoever, this is your spot. Wow, I'm going live. When I first came in here, the first council I was at, they said, we need exposure. And being experienced with social media and filmmaking more than the, you know, the general hippie, I was like, okay, I can take this on. People started making TikToks. And then a TikToker just randomly came one day and all of a sudden we were like, this is how we can tell the world about this place. The sun is shining. This is free land for free people. Wow, there's a dance party up in here. You're welcome to join us. It feels like things are really happening. We are building sustainably. Our mission is simple, to create a network of like-minded communities who can host all you TikTokers. You could live here. I made a video that I kind of like made like a recipe, like I knew it would go viral. I was like, I'm gonna say communes right in the beginning and then I'm gonna say the address and then I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do all the things that they like. 
Living in a sustainable, intentional community doesn't have to be a cult. You know, I read through some of the comments and they were like, I never knew something like this existed. I'm coming, I'll be there, you know, and all this excitement. The fact that we were able to go so viral on TikTok just to show people are interested in this way of life. I put down my phone and I came back and it had half a million views and the comments were suddenly getting negative. Once we started hitting like above the 100K, a lot of the comments started to change. Is this a cult? Is this Charlie Manson? Let's ask everyone if we live in a cult. Guys, do we live in a cult? No, what? You shouldn't have to say you're not a cult. I met all of them. They're all cultists. They're all terrible people. It's really not safe. Please don't go there. I already did. It's not worth it. Since everybody is talking about the TikTok cult, I thought I would jump on the bandwagon. This is part three on the garden and why I think it's a cult. Their only core values revolve around calling modern society Babylon. And the fucking bootleg Ed Sheeran guy? Like, what is that? At this point, there are like dozens and dozens of people around the world researching this. Guys. The reason why I made TikToks is because I believe in change. My initial impression was that it seemed very suspicious to me because I didn't understand why they would advertise their address so publicly and especially on a platform like TikTok that skews towards a younger audience than other forms of social media. So in the beginning, it was really Rel's videos that actually made me think more that it was a cult. People trust the government more than they trust themselves. It's crazy. Just come to the garden, come come be part of the revolution. It's not even just what she's saying, but like what's on the screen. It's like 8967 Galen Road, just come, it's fine. And the other one, it's just like, we're not a cult. Join the revolution. I made this video right before I went to bed one night about how they had apparently eaten a cat and I woke up and I had blown up overnight. I only had 100 followers before this, so it's been really weird to have 20,000 people watching me. And from there, I really started digging into the research of the garden. Good morning, Cult Talk. Time for your daily update. One of the biggest things that raised red flags was like the general attitude, which was that instead of like taking the time to seriously deal with people's concerns, they just made cult jokes and like they made videos about drinking the Kool-Aid. Here you go, Julia. Thanks, Ralph. Quick, drink it. <laughs> drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> Drink the Kool-Aid, guys. <laughs> Quickly. It's happening? Quickly. But I, when I saw this, it made it even clearer to me that Rel in particular, she is thriving off the negative attention. If you don't know how to start a fire, I can teach you. I can show you the way of the woods. That one really made people creeped out, I guess. Like, maybe they've never watched a scary movie or something, but like... <laughs> I don't know. They got super weirded out by it, acting like they didn't know that I purposefully made it creepy. <laughs> it's like, I think it's obviously creepy, like theatrical creepy. <laughs> but I think that might have twisted the vibration of the crowd maybe a little bit. I didn't necessarily mean to twist them in that way. So everybody wants to know about this cat thing. That was my video that initially went viral. It was me saying like, guys, I watched Tree's live stream. They ate a cat. So here's what happened. Ever since I have been on TikTok, I think I've had some people who just straight up look at me and want to hate me for some reason. So, and I figured out that I can like report somebody for harassment too because there's a guy who literally like his whole page is like a harassment page of the garden. And these are like extensive videos where he's like gone on like people's Facebook pages and like searched for like anything he can find. Oh my god. Do you remember his name? It's like we gotta do like two a week and have two different dungeons. Dirty human something. Yeah. I'm also known as Dirty Human Twunk on TikTok. Welcome back to Cult Commune TikTok. Let's talk about Rel, okay? The one everyone's been talking about is this one where she's wearing a hat that she made out of her literal cat. The story goes the cat killed some chickens, so she killed it and ate it and then made it into a hat. In the US, this is considered animal abuse and you can go to jail for something like this. Was it hard to make a hat out of the cat? No, it was actually like the hide of the cat. It like was the perfect size to fit right around my head. It's, it came out really, really nice. I'm really into animal hides and 
um, honoring the lives of animals. So people are hating on me for something to do with a cat and I just wanted to let everyone know that in Tennessee on farms where there's livestock, if there's a vermin that comes and kills your livestock, it gets shot. I didn't know about the cat thing until a month ago or something. I guess what happened was uh, three years ago, there was a cat that, a wild cat that was attacking the chickens. And it's pretty normal in Tennessee or on a farm that if, you know, a raccoon or a fox or a, if something's attacking your livestock, um, you have to, you have to kill it. So that's what happened. And then because they don't believe in waste, uh, the people that were here at the time ate it. And uh, someone also made a hat out of it. I was here and I, I did obtain the cat's hide, but I was not the one who had to kill the cat or that skinned the cat. I just was the one who ended up with the hide, so I made it into something. <laughs> did you hear that that TikTok cult also killed a dog? They ate the cat, but one of them also skinned a dog and is like wearing it. This is my dog's tail. See, he's still wagging his tail, guys. He's still a happy boy. One of the animals that I honored the life of was my dog when he got hit and killed by a truck. And I just thought it was the most sentimental and loving thing you could do. And I made the skirt, it's actually right here. <laughs> and he's still just as soft as he was. <laughs> when people reacted to the video, it was somewhat expected because I know that it's not a normal thing that people do this day and age. It's somewhat expected that I'm going to get some kind of negative reaction from people because of the shock value. Did you hear anything about the, the scarecrow? I, I mean, there was like this whole thing about a scarecrow. It's also this. They just dress it up like a black woman and it just looks like a mammy figure or something especially the, the fact that they're like located in the South, like everybody just saw that and was like, this is really like shocking to see, like even if they didn't think it was that way, like the way it looks is really bad. It was a scarecrow I made last year for Halloween and it literally has a stuffed animal California raisin as the face. And they're calling me a racist because I put the California raisin in a scarecrow. So sometimes people, when I mention that I don't see races, um, I don't see genders, I don't look at people like that. Um, some people tell me that that is a white privileged thing for me to say. And I think telling somebody that they're white privilege is a racist thing to say because you're calling me a color that I don't define myself with. So there's that. <laughs> Oh, it gets worse, actually. It's near two sundown towns. It's very sus. It's, it's very, it's very sus. I don't know too much about the sundown towns. Um, I know that we're in the South. I know there's a lot of racist uh, people or people that are prejudiced against others around here. I don't think people are going to kill people in this area, though. I think it's being blown out of proportion. I think that if people come here, they would realize that. And, and honestly, I also think that being exposed to more diversity would be healthy for the, the local community's growth. You know, how are people spread to stop being prejudiced against people unless they're exposed to those people, I guess, is the, is the thing. And not saying that I'm trying to fix anybody by putting anybody in danger. I just, I just don't think that there is that much danger. I've been at the garden for right at a month now. I feel at home. I feel like this is a great place for my mental health. This is like um, community therapy <laughs> sometimes. I initially heard about the garden from TikTok. My grandfather and I had this like long discussion of like the potential dangers of coming here. Gave it, you know, that there's no information about anybody that's here. Couldn't even contact anybody. I was thinking, what kind of people could take advantage of the open door policy. A real commune that's a safe commune will not just accept anybody. It's not a safe place. 
please don't go there. I already did. It's not worth it. And he said they will offer alcohol. They will offer drugs. This is obviously alleged. I have no way of knowing if this is true. These kinds of communities are breeding grounds for abusers because there's no oversight. There's no accountability. I've actually thought a lot about like the way that the garden can give like shelter to people who need it or like that in a video actually Patrick says that in the beginning when they started in 2009 some of their initial issues actually revolved around the fact that they had a lot of people with criminal records and addiction issues coming in and they didn't have any support for them. You know we have people coming through the garden that have mental health issues that's definitely for sure be it you know bipolar autistic or even just strange and being in that energy in such a tight space, I mean, it, it can be a lot, you know? You can't provide a supportive environment if it's just like anybody can come without you knowing anything about them. And the only way you find out things about them is once they're already there. We've always had an open door and we have natural intuition and, and our human instinct tells us when somebody is, is not okay and we, we ask them to leave when we get that feeling. In terms of safety, we have a different way of organizing. Um, so people are used to things like background checks, but then, you know, there also can always be a first time that somebody ever does something or things like that, you know? So I think all of society takes on that risk anytime that you trust anyone. And also we do ask people to leave, you know, and then a lot of those people are the people that are also now speaking bad about us on the internet, of course, because it's really hard to get rejected. But when people say, what's your vetting process? That's it, you know? So those people on the internet were people that were not trusted to be here. Yeah, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, strong. Yes. Wow. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> So obviously, some people think that you are the cult leader of this place. <laughs> I have a really loud personality, so I could see how people could mistake me for a leader of a group. I have to ask, are you like a cult leader? No, I'm not a cult leader. I have tried to stray away from leader-based format systems my whole life. I've been fighting severely against the idea of people withholding leadership, and it's completely against everything I believe in. So, of course, it's an ongoing joke, you know. There's even signs around here, is it culty, <laughs> you know? But I would say, you know, all jokes aside, no, because we don't have a religious ideology. We don't try to control people. People are free to come and go. We're free-thinking individuals, you know. For some people, any intentional community is going to look like a cult. Every week we have two different councils on typically Wednesdays and Sundays. Next topic, dog tip. Uh, I'm asking everybody to be mindful of their dogs. I've almost stepped in dog poop twice over here on the path up to the buses. We all have equal say in how the community is run. So with 100% consensus, it's not like majority rules. I think some people think that's what that means. It means that everybody is on the same page about everything that is going on here. And that's the way that we keep it moving forward. Okay, next topic, 10 days. Me and Bryce, 10 days. Ah, okay. Uh, I don't know how to put it. Oh, yes, it's my life. Well, I plan on staying here indefinitely. I feel called to steward this land at the moment. Come with my friend. I love you. I love you. It's an honor to be amongst you all. Ten seconds for me. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. The ten seconds that we do on our councils is a way that we consense. It is a chance for somebody, if they oppose what's being proposed, then they can speak up during that 10 seconds of silence. If not, the proposal is passed. Okay, next topic is TikTok heat. 
So I, I put that on the list. Um, as everybody here knows, we kind of brought this lifestyle and what we're doing here to the TikTok world, you know, and we tried to share it with people. As a result of that, we got a lot of heat, you know, a lot of flack back and people got mad and they conspired to basically call all the authorities they could. We've already dealt with animal control and we've dealt with child protection services. They've even contacted the FBI. The Animal and Protection Agency or whatever they're called came here and were questioning us about the cat. He left knowing we didn't do anything illegal, that we're fine and that we're a farm. And also the Child Protective Agency came and they had been watching my TikToks for weeks beforehand and loved them. They even wanted my signature and things like this. And it was, it was pretty weird, but like, it was cool. And they could also see, you know, that we are not ill intent people. They've left understanding who we are, you know. Um, this hate group is all coming from a bunch of people who haven't been here. Sometimes on my live streams, people would ask me like, are you gonna call the cops? Are you gonna call CPS? And like, personally, I don't believe in calling authorities on things like this just in general, but they have a public address so I can't control what people do. And that's kind of been my stance from the get go is that like, I can only do my best to be responsible with what I put out, but what, what people do with that, I can't really be held responsible because it's not like I'm going out and saying like, burn this place down, like, you know, call the cops on them, call CPS, like make sure their lives are ruined. Like, I've just been trying to offer a skeptical viewpoint of this place that's being promoted like over and over. All right, welcome back. Part two of why the garden is probably a cult. I did in the beginning say like, this is definitely a cult. Once I learned more, I was like, I'm not so convinced. I see it more as poorly run, you know, full of problems, not necessarily like, a cult. But I still reference it as that because it's what gets it to the For You page. Good morning, cult talk. It's time for your morning update. You really learn pretty quickly, like, how your content's going to be seen and what will get seen. I'm not doing it to brand it a cult. I'm doing it to brand my videos so they get seen. So I'm questioning if we should continue using TikTok, specifically TikTok. Everything else has been working apparently so far, so. When the, like, the slack of the hate all started, we can sense that we would no longer make any TikToks about the garden, inviting anyone to the garden, or even mentioning the garden. Uh, I, think, I think that's... We can show as much as possible. Like, TikTok all day. Because we have nothing to hide. But that's all we have done. Like, I made videos showing exactly what's going on. Oh, we're just having fun. And, you know, we're being called you know, like racist or that these children are not safe, you know, like just showing a video of like a kid painting was offensive to people, you know what I mean? So I honestly think that people are weirded out that we haven't been posting about the garden. They think something is bad and wrong. If we just like completely media blackout TikTok, they're going to take that as a mission of guilt, basically. So we're changing the consensus that we can TikTok about the garden, but we cannot explicitly invite people here? Is that what we're feeling? I propose that it is okay for people to make TikTok videos about the garden, about what goes on at the garden, about the people of the garden, but it's to, to no longer post things that are known to be controversial and to no longer post TikTok videos inviting people to the garden or sharing the address. 10 seconds. Ten seconds. <laughs> Woo! Now, if anyone's curious about what is controversial, maybe ask me. Hi. Right. So, this is probably gonna be the last video I make for a while. Um, it's like too much for me. Like I'm not secure enough to like handle that kind of those kind of insults and everything so and tree kept trying tree kept like okay i'm just gonna keep making them positive you know we'll turn it around and it just didn't turn around yeah i mean once the you know strong hate group really went for me like my anxiety was through the roof i've never felt anything like that before you know the a group of people out to get me to hurt me it's also scary because they have our address. 
Uh, so when you're getting hate from people that have your address, there were nights when I was going to sleep and I was like, what if somebody comes here, you know, and like it, it was, that was really scary. It's also interesting, like, you know, that people say it's not safe here. And I'm like, the only thing that's ever made me feel unsafe here is your hatred. <laughs> like that is the only thing that's ever done it. It did cross my mind, you know, because people were online were talking about like, I'm going to come burn it down and we different people got death threats. Um, we're going to kill you. We're going to break your legs, you know. Um, uh, having those things said, it's a little scary, you know, and I, I have uh, people I care about a lot here, and so, yeah. Uh. I was so hurt, you know, because all I was trying to do was, you know, show myself, express myself, to be so hated for trying to help people and help the world was a real struggle for me. My friends and I all started joining TikTok at the beginning of the pandemic. We'd be like, you know, wouldn't it, it be so funny to go viral on TikTok? And what I've learned is like, it's actually not that funny. It kind of sucks because you just have people like trying to fight with you and people like calling you all these names and like accusing you of things that you didn't even do. So my comments are just like overloaded with transphobia and homophobia against me. Like everything that I post now, I was just like having panic attacks because I was just like, I don't know like what to do. I was really freaking out for a while. So I definitely learned like the hard way that being in the spotlight is not that fun. <laughs> I've also just learned like a lot of people have no self-awareness and like that can honestly apply to me too. I think that this also taught me that maybe I'm not as self-aware as I thought because I didn't necessarily think that my videos would be viewed in a way where people would take it and be like, okay, well, like let's send some death threats. Like that's what we should do with this. Like I didn't think that that's what I was making. Like, I really don't think that many of the people involved were inherently evil. I kind of just felt like they had some questionable intentions and there's people with marginalized identities like LGBT people, women, people of color who like need safe places to go right now and like marketing this as that safe place seems A, untrue and B, potentially like malicious and even thank God like those malicious intentions may not have actually been there. I don't think I regret what I what I've done, you know, with TikTok and expressing this place and myself and showing it to the world because, you know, it's showed millions of people that living sustainably is possible. How else are we going to spread the word but by spreading the word, you know, and, and of course we can't spread the word only to people that are going to love us, so some people are going to not like us. And I think that if we could do it again, it would be good to just take being poked at it without poking back, you know, because um, that just kind of encourages the whole thing. We, do, we just have to keep pushing forward and, and staying positive through whatever comes our way. And that's how I have to see it. Like, I don't want to let the negative energy destroy what we're building. We're all kind of united in this greater mission of showing the world about sustainable living. And we even had a talk, you know, maybe after all this exposure, we might get shut down for a little bit, but it's more important that we show people what we're doing here. I don't know if the garden is going to be back open. I don't know if things will ever be the same. We were trying to share a vision with the world, and that's the reaction we got from people. It's like, we want to shut you down. Like, don't be growing food. Don't be bringing people together and making people happy and feel good. Like, fuck that. Like, we're going to tear you down. So that's like, they're trying to tear us down, and we're just like sick of it and tired. So the garden closed. So don't get me wrong, I'm definitely glad that the um, garden is no longer open to visitors and they're like discouraging people from TikTok from going there. However, they need to accountability not only for what they've done in the past, but for all of the danger that they could have put people in in the present. I've been hesitant to put new content out about this just because there's already so much out there and I feel like I've done a lot of what I wanted to do, which is raise, raise awareness and get this place kind of closed down, which it basically is. Mm -hmm.